when does tampering start? When when do you get the the, the you know these coaches or intermediaries to reach out to somebody to say, hey, uh, we're going to need a quarterback at Tennessee next year, or yeah. you know how this goes. When when does that start? It's an interesting way you phrased it because in my mind, the first thing that I think of is for it to start. That means that it stops at some point. <laughs> You know, right? Well, so, well, there's not a, a portal window that you go from this to this because it feels like things have to lead up to the transfer portal. Yes, and and so the the portal, there are some more guidelines now, right? Like this year, it's a little different. You can't just enter the portal at any point. And so December 4th, I believe, is the date or 5th, maybe it, it is, where the, por- the portal opens. And so there's this thought that it's like, well, there's going to be no tampering until the you know until the portal is open and then it's legal because mm-hmm. then you can contact and recruit these kids i think if if we if we believe that then then we all should be you know buying up the oceanfront property outside of flagstaff right because then we're all gullible <laughs> tampering is happening inducements are happening um and and i th- i think that it is the worst unintended consequence of what were well-intended new changes to the rules. I think that the transfer rule is well-intended. It's been obviously, you know, misused at times. NIL, I've been arguing for NIL for a long time since I was a player. Um, By the way, I I played with Jeremy Bloom at Colorado, you know, so I had played minor league baseball. I could go back and I was fine. I was eligible, but he couldn't be a skier, which was, you know, it was... It was crazy. So I've been arguing for NIL for for a long time. But Dan, when you mix all of this together, then you've got what the landscape that we currently have where there's a lot of tampering, there's inducements, there's all these things, and there's rules on the books that are supposed to curtail this type of behavior. Let me just pose a, a, a question back. I would say, isn't it more about enforcement, right? And and the governing bodies actually going out and enforcing the rules that are existing. And and I think that that's an important piece of what college football should be moving forward. And it can't be in retrospect. Hey, two years ago, you had, you know, X, Y, and Z violation. I'm talking about in real time. Do you know why the NFL is the NFL? And some people love this about it. Some people hate it. They have real time enforcement. You don't wear your socks high enough. Bam. It comes out of your game check. And, and I believe that, the coaches in college football are now making enough money, right, that we should be finding coaches. It's not about vacating wins or doing something like a show cause. You tamper with a player, it's a million bucks right now. And now I'll show you a bunch of coaches that will govern themselves. And so I think that if we just shift the way we talk about enforcement of the existing rules, I think that we could get some of this stuff under wraps. If a player leaves, do I still have to pay him? How, how does NIL work if, is it a year-to-year contract like a scholarship is? Well, there there is no rhyme or reason. There's no singular, you know, stock form. We're not pulling this out of the shelf and saying like, Hey, here's the NIL thing. Like it used to be with a scholarship, right? A letter of intent. So every one of these is different. I've seen NILs that are very straightforward. If you're here, if you're eligible, you know, this is, this is what the NIL uh, contract states. I've seen them come from companies and I've seen them facilitated through the university. Uh, I've also seen third party agents get involved and start promising kids things that are outside of the school or outside of any entity that's paying money saying like, Hey, I'm going to promise you, I'm going to go get these deals. And then in the fine print, I've seen this, and this is where it's very sad. These players are signing away future earnings. You and I both know that that happens in the NFL going towards the draft, but now it's starting to happen in college football. I don't think that that's great for, for these athletes or their families. So to answer your question, like, There's no one way that this is being done, which is why people are so eager to try to get, let's say, federal legislation to try to put some sort of guardrails around what we're doing right now in in name, image and likeness. I'll, I'll leave you with this thought on Drake May in the final 30 seconds. Open market. If if there were if he was on the open market right now. Mm. Just like Caleb Williams was. What is Drake May worth? 
<laughs> for one year? Yeah, you can bring him in. I mean, he's a redshirt freshman. You might get him for two. 10, 15, right? I mean, like, because if it works, a year? then it's worth every penny. But yeah. I mean, think think about what, what a playoff run means to, to a team, to that conference in terms of revenue share. But let's say so, Tennessee, they just lost Hooker. I don't know what their backup situation is. But if Drake May <laughs> wanted to go to Tennessee, open market, pay him $10 million a year? I mean, we, we, we saw it. So Tennessee reportedly offered, now it was over four years, but it was a, somewhere between 8 and $9 million to a kid coming out of high school that's yeah. going to sign and go there. So if you're telling me I can get a a – a known commodity yeah. like Drake May, I think that that would be worth close to 10. Yeah. <laughs> and by the, by the way, and I'm not saying that I don't like their backups, but if I'm Drake May, and I hate just, I hate throwing this out there, but real quick, Dan, if I'm one of those great quarterbacks, Drake May, I'm looking at Marvin Harrison and being like, oh, wait, he doesn't have a starter coming back? Because that dude, Marvin Harrison Jr., he's one of the best players I've ever covered in college football. Drake May to Ohio State. <laughs> $10 million. Hey, you know, who knows? Yeah. 